with each one in this place right now. Soften our hearts to hear your word, hear your voice. Lord God, you are worthy of all the honor. John chapter 1. John 1, 35 and 50. The next day, again, John, John the Baptist, was standing with two of his disciples. And he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, well, What are you seeking? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard G John say and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. <clears throat> the next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Beth Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We had found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. I kind of got, I shared a message a few weeks back about go and make disciples. The commission, we've been commissioned, we've been, Jesus said, go and make disciples. Well, what is a disciple? Disciple is a follower. Someone who follows somebody. As we read earlier in this passage, John the Baptist had disciples, people that were following him. But John knew, because he'd already baptized Jesus, he knew who Jesus was. He knew he was the Messiah, the one in whom they'd been waiting. Israel had been waiting for thousands of years. <clears throat> So I kind of got the idea from for this message from the book, Four Chair Discipleship, by Dan Spader. The four chairs, which would be the four in Spader's investigation of it, would be kind of four stages of Christianity, four stages of your walk with Christ. One, come and see. Two, follow me. So these are invitations Jesus made. Come and see. Follow me. I will make you fishers of men and go and bear much fruit. So I titled this message, Come and See. We see in verse 36, it was actually John the Baptist made the first invitation in this passage. <clears throat> uh, starting at 35, the next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. 
the NIV says, look, the Lamb of God. So when we do see something spectacular, you know, how do we do that? You go, hey, check this out. Yeah, I'm pretty spectacular. But that's what John the Baptist said, look. And so, we talk about going and making disciples. So this is kind of the nuts and bolts of how do you do that. It starts with an invitation. Maybe that invitation is invite someone in to start a relationship. So we have opportunity to share. Just like, you know, we talked about telling our story. It's a great place. It's an invitation. Here, let me tell you what God has been doing for me. Let me tell you what God's been doing around me. disciples of John, John said, look, the Lamb of God, and what do they do? They're like, yeah, we know we're going to go to the one. So they started following Jesus, and Jesus turns around and says, what are you seeking? Or why are you following me? And he said to him, Rabbi, which was a, that was a great term of respect in their culture. And he said, where are you staying? And he said, come and you will see. He made an invitation. He said, come and you'll see where I'm staying. We don't know where he was staying because that's not the important part. The important part was, come. Oh, here I am. So they saw where he was staying. They stayed with him the rest of the day for it was the 10th hour. It was 4 p.m., what my footnote says. <clears throat> now one of the two, in verse 40, heard John speak and followed Jesus it was Andrew, it was Simon's brother. See, there's other passages when, in some of the other Gospels. John's got a completely different take on it. The other three are actually pretty similar. You know, we see Jesus goes by the water and you're fishing. But this, that isn't what this, it's not what, how John, but this has been a different part of it. says to Simon Peter we have found the Messiah then in 43 so the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to him follow me again it's another pretty simple Invitation. But Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Now, wh why is that important? Because I'm sure he heard about this. I'm sure he knew who Jesus was. Because we know earlier that Andrew, he was pretty psyched. But Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. In Scripture, they knew that Jesus was to come from Nazareth. But evidently, Nazareth, according to Philip's reply to that, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Evidently, they had a reputation. And it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest town, evidently. But Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said, Behold, an Israelite who indeed, who, whom there is no deceit. But that blew Nathanael right out of the water. He's saying, how does this guy know me? But a little bit, if you move up a little bit, Jesus did the same thing to Peter. He said, you are Peter, son of John. We didn't really see Peter's response here, did we? But, so verse 48, Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered, before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. He saw all of you too. And others. Then 
all of a sudden Nathaniel realized what he'd been hearing was true. He answered, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Then Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? So what is faith? Faith is believe, believing without seeing. You know, we want, we want to touch and feel. You know, I know this is a pen. Because I can touch it, feel it, and I write with it. It doesn't take much faith to believe there's a pen, does it? So Jesus did come down on him a little bit. But then he says to Nathaniel, in the second half of verse 50, you will see even greater things than these. Now we're pretty familiar with the gospel stories. Jesus does some pretty cool stuff. You can give me examples. I'll let you feed back a little bit. But it's something greater than just knowing who someone is without before talking to them. Sickness bringing people back from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. All those things. And much, much more. It, I believe it's in the end of John here. He says, this is, I couldn't write everything that Jesus did. There's not a book big enough to contain it. So these guys went on to see some pretty awesome things. Discipleship begins with a simple invitation. So let's turn over to chapter 4 in John. And you ever heard of the story of the woman at the well? The Samaritan woman? Yeah. yeah. So Jesus stops at this well in Samaria, and Samaria wasn't... The Jews and the Samaritans didn't mix. Still don't. Yeah, they still don't. Samaritans were half Jews, but they had different belief systems. But the same God. There was God fearing people in Samaria. The Samaritans still sacrifice the lambs on Passover today. The Jews do not. Hmm. So this woman Jesus is talking to at the well, he asks her for a drink of water. And she's blown away. She says, why, why are you a Jew talking to a Samaritan woman? And he says, uh, I'll give you water that will lead you to eternal life. Living water. And then he goes on to tell her to go home and tell her husband. She says, well, I don't have a husband. He says, I know, you have five, and the one you're with now isn't your husband. Now she's blown away. So let's pick up in chat, John chapter 4, verse 27. Just then the disciples came back, because they were in town getting food, and Jesus was sitting at the well. And they marveled that he was talking with a woman, but no one said, what do you seek, or why are you talking with her? So the woman laughed her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, verse 29, come and see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? She made an invitation. She told them their, her story and made an invitation. In verse 30, they went out of town and were coming to him. So let's turn over to verse 39 now. Still John 4. And let's see what the Samaritans, the city's response to this was. This invitation. So verse 39 says, Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. Many from that town believed in him because of her testimony. God wants to do the same thing with your testimony, with my testimony, our story. And then verse 40, so when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. 41, and many more believed because of his word. Look at the impact. 
impact of one invitation made. That's pretty huge. So we never know how our story, what God's doing in your life, how that's going to affect anybody. And the people he puts in your path. So never underestimate your story or a simple invitation. Like I said earlier, maybe it's a simple invitation just to become friends with them, to start to build a relationship that you may have the opportunity to share Christ. Maybe it's inviting them here on a Sunday night or somewhere else, another church or a Bible study or maybe start a Bible study. I don't know. Maybe just get together and get to know each other better. Simple invitation. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, thank you for each and every one of our stories. Thank you, Lord, for this your example. How it is we're supposed to go and make disciples teach. Give us understanding. Show us the people that you want us to reach out to. Give an invitation to you. Give us the courage and boldness to do so. Thank you for your word. How it speaks to us. That it's alive. Father, we love you. We give you the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name. prayers tomorrow. I have an appointment with my cardiologist. Just for peace going into this appointment. Mm -hmm. I want to praise from the appointment last week. They cut her medicine in half and she's feeling a lot, lot better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Appointment tomorrow, you said? Yeah. Which is kind of amazing. They called me Friday afternoon and I got in tomorrow already. Mm -hmm. It makes a difference when your doctor gets on the phone and yells at him. <laughs> you never know where motivation comes from. <laughs> yes, that's right. She said, you have to get in. I'll take care of it. Clearly she did. She did. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Miss Sarah's not feeling well. She had a praise that the weather was good for all their school stuff this week. <laughs> said this morning, <laughs> I don't pray for rain. Yes, Remember sure. a guy named Noah? <laughs> <laughs> he got a little more rain than he wanted. In moderation. <laughs> I will pray for good weather. <laughs> I agree we could use some moisture, but I don't. Sometimes we get what we ask for. Good weather covers it all. That is what I have right. learned. Half a year or more, 
berries from my friend Shannon that we were praying for earlier. Yeah. She had another scan done and it, everything is looking good, including there was a lesion on her liver that they were just gonna keep an eye on and it is getting smaller. Oh, mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. God is good. Well, the men, men's group had a chance to anoint Larry and pray for him, and he came in just for that for a few minutes on Thursday. And, and uh, was, he just got out of the hospital, I think. It was really terrible. But uh, he was better now. Anyway, after he left the slight gone, we're glad he came in and allowed us the privilege of doing that because it's as much a blessing. Prayers or the praise. Yeah, obedience is a blessing. I just want to do a praise for the bard. Um, the relationships that are here have filled a void um, for me, not having my family around, and I just really appreciate everybody here. Praise God. Amen to that. Amen. You know, I was at a funeral today, and the guy was one of those guys that could always, no matter, I used to stop in just for coffee, because a friend of mine worked for him, he's a realtor, and I'd stop in there, and, and he'd always, him and I'd get talking about faith things, and he was one of these guys that always increased my faith. Every time I left there, he'd be like, we'd have conversations, and, and it'd be one of those deals where... Something would be going on in either my life, his life, or whatever, and we'd get talking about it. And he always, well, you know, the Word of God says this, and I'm going to stand on that. Anybody wants to argue with me about it, go ahead and argue, but you can't argue with the Word of God. And it's like, I'm going to miss that, because it's like, there's been a lot of people in the last probably 10 years that were guys that have poured a lot into me. That are that have gone home because they were all they were all the 70, 80, 90 year old guys, and it's like I kind of miss. I'm gonna miss having those conversations with him. That's gonna be you. How old are you? <laughs> no, I'm not that. I'm not you know, that old yet. But no, it's like, but, but you know, they measured you, and now, yeah, now it's now my it's job. Your to, turn. It's, but it's it's been crazy because it's like I keep I keep thinking the one thing he always used to say. He says, you know. God's either going to heal me from this or he's going to take me home. And he says, I'm ready, ready either way. And that's the way we need to live our life. And I'm kind of going, I've always been one of these guys. Well, God, i got two little kids. And then I'm thinking, yeah, but God's the one that gave me those kids. And technically there is. I'm just charged with trying to keep them going the right direction. What's this man's name? Mike Orr. Mike Orr. That's a praise. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just want to mention that the media and Jamie talked about the softly and tenderly. Huh? You know, we know a lot of these old hymns, but we sometimes don't really think about the words. Verse 4 says, or verse 3 says, Time is now fleeting, the moments are passing, passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering, deathbeds are coming, coming for you and me. Exactly what she just said. You live in that light of you know what for me to live is Christ to die in us. Margie asked 
again. Uh, her dad had a small stroke yesterday and he's had multiple of them. But he's uh, confused today, so you're going to need them in the shower for a while longer yet. Next week we'll have a, I guess, a guest speaker next week here, coming from Texas. A buddy of mine from school from North Dakota is bringing him over. So Troy and some of his family will be here. And Jeremy is this guy's name. I don't know much about it. I'm trusting Troy. But, <laughs> but, uh, I think Troy's pretty trustworthy. Yeah. Troy's pretty solid. <laughs> this guy, Jeremy. He felt led around the first of the year to hit all 50 states this year and preach revival in all 50 states. And he, he said he's not, he doesn't underestimate the power of one. He will go anywhere for one. I think there's somebody else did that, right? He told a parable about that. Lost sheep, one. So, looking forward to that. the gospel right in front of the White House. So what else is going on? And uh, what is it, two weeks now? You're graduating? So Kiara's, Kiara's a senior should be graduating in two weeks. So we've been kind of... Uh, Cleaning up uh, our place, you know, and, and it's coming along, you know. I mean, we ought to grumble from the children, but uh, we're getting uh, clean. That's a nasty word. Yeah, <laughs> that's hard on a farm. Yeah. But my, my place hasn't looked better in, in years, so. Yeah. We'll pick on Kiara different week. <laughs> the party is the May 29th, that's it? 29th. Yeah, so anyone that wants to come is welcome from 1 to 4. That's an invitation. That's an invitation <laughs> for food. You like it? <laughs> food. Yeah. If anybody needs an address, get a hold of them. Any one of us, we can get you an address. Well, shall we go before the throne? <coughs> Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. You are the one, the only God. Sarah for well, and all the kids for these outside programs. I do I do ask that uh, there's some missing tonight, Sarah. Others are kind of dealing with some cold and stuff. Lord, I just pray that you touch and heal them, restore them so we can be back together again. Lord, I pray for Josiah. 
for Linda's mom and dad as they're struggling with COVID. For you. Thank you that he was able to come and come in through in obedience to be prayed for. In obedience to scripture. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you touch and heal. Do that, Lord. Whatever way you would go. Lord, thank you for work you've done in Shannon's body and her family. I praise you that this spot in November is getting smaller. God. Lord, thank you for the impact that Mike had on Miles. Thank you for Mike's life and his obedience to you and his love for the word and faith in the word and trust that he had in it. It's just a story that Miles shared. An example. you do just comfort give peace Lord, right Lord, thank you that Kiara is here with us in this upcoming graduation Lord, be, be mighty upon our life mighty upon us. Lord I thank you for this place in which I stand Emily's blind that you provide Many are the plans of the man of the mind. In the mind of a man, but it's the purpose of the Lord this day. Thank you for the relationships we've built here, for the family that you've put together. Your family, brothers and sisters of Christ. I just want to give you the honor, glory, and praise. All these things I pray in Jesus. 